hi welcome back to the second segment of this interesting conversation on marketing in publishing industry i am harpreet your host for marketing demystified and i have two very special guests with us uh lipika who is ex marketing head for harper collins and i have vikesh who is ex marketing head for lexus nexus he was also a host for season 1 and i am hoping he will join back soon so um let's start the conversation um so taking the thread forward from segment 1 uh what is the future of marketing in publishing industry and maybe uh vikesh you can take this question first uh future of marketing in publishing uh, is exciting um uh, i think uh, uh, marketers today uh, in publishing have access to uh, many many uh, uh, resources and tools uh, which were non existent earlier uh, uh, the entire digital and social media uh, sphere i think uh, offers tremendous set of opportunities so uh, i uh, yeah i mean the short answer is uh, it's exciting uh you know uh, it's evolving very rapidly and it's very exciting and especially with all this entire uh, generative ai thing coming in uh, i think uh, this whole space is going to uh, buzz with a lot more activities great so what's your take on that lipika i feel marketing and publishing especially trade publishing requires disruption it requires uh, uh you know something extremely uh different from what we are currently used to doing um unlike what vikesh uh, said i feel you know we are too structured in the way or probably i should put it uh, we've become too structured in the way we market uh trade books and i think there's a need for disruption so do you think with this ai and machine learning like what vikesh said with chat gpt obviously we are all of us are using that as as um, content creators and wherever it is required in in marketing but do you think with the ai and obviously social media things have really changed the way we used to do it uh, earlier the traditional ways of marketing have changed so do you think more evolution will come in oh of course i mean uh, i do see uh, a lot of marketers uh, taking help from ai uh, not just to generate content but also to analyze the markets better uh but uh, i also feel that social media was something where uh, you know uh, it's it's one of the important things where we need disruption we have moved from basic uh, social media campaigns to more specialized ones but i think uh, the need today is uh, to identify uh, influencers who can help us uh, you know um, uh, take the conversation around the product more seriously what we are all currently doing the mistake that we are making is that we are running after people who have huge following and considering them as influencers but having the right kind of target influencers is an important activity that social media marketing needs to uh, take on because uh, you know not everybody can be i mean you might have a huge following but you may not be the right fit for uh, promoting a particular product especially in case of books so uh, i think uh, there we need a little bit more uh, of uh, uh, being thoughtful of how we proceed with our social media marketing but yes ai of course is exciting there are exciting times ahead I, we are still learning uh, how to use it for uh, uh, you know marketing uh, we are still learning how to derive uh, benefit uh, beyond the regular chat gpts and content so yeah that's one space we should all be looking at and getting trained in do both of you think the way uh, we have changed our reading habits you know earlier it was all um, paper books now people have moved to kindle and there are pdfs available uh, do you think that will have a major impact on the way you market books see the marketing for um, uh... kindle is needs a very different strategy it needs a very different way we look at uh, in a way it's a different product altogether your your target audience is very different from what it is for physical books especially in trade publishing right, my um, question I, is um, uh, sorry to interrupt lipika so my question is more around uh, you you picked up the right word people have moved away i mean they are moving away although there are hardcore physical book lovers like me or maybe vikesh i mean our generation 
but now the new generation they are more moving towards books right it's everything is online their classes are online their lectures are online i mean i'm covering for the educational segment also uh even the trade books people like to read they don't like to carry books along um so there are reading apps also uh, there are audio apps also so in this kind of environment and that question is to both of you do you think marketing of uh, content is going to be different than than what it was earlier when people were more into physical books uh so okay so i'll i'll you know take a quick minute uh, i think um, uh what has changed and what is going to change further is that um uh from uh, and i'm i'm prominently talking from an educational perspective uh, from you know uh, generating demand from creating awareness uh, the focus will shift towards uh, driving conversations right uh, creating engagement right uh, i i think even the proposition of books per se itself is changing so in the educational space for example uh, we are now creating what we call as hybrid books uh, what it means is that with um, uh, every chapter there's an integrated qr code that enables the reader to uh, go and get some digital supplements these could be videos these could be practice questions these could be other engaging uh, multimedia content right um, the uh, you're right the uh, uh, you know uh, we we actually tend to consume more content uh, these days uh, more so probably on our mobile phone um, but uh, educational or professional content is more serious content right now say for example textbooks uh, you if you are going to spend hours to learn something and practice something you are going to require a physical book perhaps right it's less training uh, you need it for quick, quick reference professional books you uh, probably will see their size and you know the shape and structure changing a lot why because they are used predominantly for reference uh, purpose right unless you know we are talking about say management books or you know self help books um, uh, but uh, you know uh, professional engineering books for example or professional computing books right you need them for a specific topic including uh, you know law books and medicine med you know uh, medical books also right uh, so so there uh, i i can clearly see that the uh, most of the, that content is gradually moving on to uh, online solutions uh, where people can find right answers immediately wherever they are right uh, nobody has time and patience to now uh, read a you know full chapter to realize that okay this is the one sentence that i was looking for right so they want to have a, a capability where they ask a question and they get the immediate answer right and that's where i think artificial intelligence will come in uh, more handy uh, my gut is that more and more publishers are going to adopt what is uh, known as uh, slm or small language models right uh, and what will happen is that uh, just like chat gpt is based on llm which is the large language model which is the entire uh, abundant you know internet content you will have publishers creating specialized solutions based on their specific domains and you know uh, sectors right so if for example a computer scientist wants certain content a publisher would be able to bring all that content together in one place and train the system in a manner that the uh, scientist is able to derive exact answers that he is looking for you know using that content so that that that's how i see you know uh, some of this professional world uh, uh, you Getting know up. changing yeah Yeah. So I'm in not... our case, it will be a little different. I think in our case, it'll it's it's moving uh, to more experiential, uh, uh, you know, kind of consumption of uh, content. I think uh, you know it can't be very academic in nature, of course, and that's why you know it'll have to be about how you want to experience that content. So whether it's a, I I think that is the reason why audio books are picking up more. Yeah. uh in in case of um, trade publishing you know there is lot more uh, consumption of audio books uh so yeah i think it's more about moving to an experiential um, kind of consumption uh, uh i mean to to add to that uh, you know probably what uh, how it will differ is uh, uh you know readers the kind of readers that we have today are very different from what they were a couple of years ago so uh while you might uh, have a point there uh, that you know they are more used to the younger audience is more used to consumption uh, online uh, but i think uh, there is also a need to uh, for, for for physical connect and that's where you know um, leisure reading is provides them that space something like coffee uh, you know they can connect over books 
and uh, that's why uh, we see also a turning back to getting physical copies so there is a very interesting case that you know once uh, the kindle edition or the ebook edition uh, uh, you know uh, entered the markets in the west about a decade ago uh, suddenly you know there was a surge in uh, everybody buying online you know and everybody buying ebooks instead of physical books and the sales of physical books dropped but five years down the line what they realized is with the increase in the reading online uh, the sales of the physical books also picked up and today you know they contribute almost equally uh, in the west uh, they contribute equal uh, numbers um, uh, you know uh, in the sales so i think that's what's happening slowly um, beginning to happen here in india though ebooks never picked up that well but audio books have picked very well Yes, our, books are. Yeah, yeah, I quite agree with Lipika. I think uh, you know, uh, general books, uh, you know, uh, trade books. Uh, uh, I mean, I, for example, would prefer to uh, hear a book while commuting every day. You know, two hours. Uh, you know, each side, right? So that's uh, sheer hours getting wasted on road, right? So I would, I would rather put that, put that, put it to some good use, right? And that's what I do. I mean, I generally, you know, uh, log into some podcast. uh so so yeah i i i see a you know a enormous opportunity in that space uh, uh experiential uh, you know uh, content consumption consumption yeah, yeah i'm sure so uh, with this kind of trend and that's the reason i thought that it will be very relevant to answer that question for the audience as well with this kind of content consumption shaping up the publishing industry i'm sure marketing will also be evolving in line with this so there would be more uh, uh, marketing required for such audio books or or having a session with the author for example i'm just thinking out aloud oh, of um, course <clears throat> of course right so my next question to both of you is uh, what are the challenges of marketing or what are the challenges which you face as marketers in publishing industry lipika you want to take that first <laughs> <laughs> i have plenty how three points us to share the uh, okay i think uh, the biggest challenge is uh, retaining talent uh, in publishing uh, and not just in marketing but across i think uh, that's a big pa- challenge and till the time we are not able to do that we will not be able to um, improve or break free from what we are used to doing unless you know you get new talent and fresh blood and fresh ideas you will not be able to grow so i feel one big challenge for marketers especially as i uh, view it is that you know we we need to learn i mean we need to find ways to uh, retain talent uh, we are not paying uh, enough for them to uh, stick back to publishing and it gone are the days when uh, people stuck to publishing for the you know for the love of it love books mm. so i think that's one big challenge the other big challenge is that i think uh, currently none of the and i might get killed for saying that but none of the big publishers are um, actually uh, leading by example they are uh, you know not uh, helping innovate they are not coming up with new ideas they are not coming up with uh, uh, ideas to take the entire industry along and grow so i think uh, these are the two major challenges i see yeah very well said lipika i think i think you know one of the fundamental challenges that i as a publisher often grapple with is that uh, what do you do and what can you do to increase the readership i think the sub- biggest challenge is that people are not reading books the way they used to one uh, and so so the competition is not just from books but the competition is from multiple channels the competition is from ott the competition is from social media the competition is from youtube how do you make books more exciting uh, how do you make it more engaging uh, i think that's one of the biggest you know challenge that we all grapple with uh, and if we can f- somehow figure out a, a system uh, or a process uh, to make books uh, hep again uh, make books exciting again uh, I, i i mean i w- i would you know uh, love to you know place my bets on that uh as a as a former marketer i i still you know do uh, ideate and you know share some thoughts with my team uh, when it comes to marketing uh, one of the bigger you know things that i often keep telling them is that what are we doing to make things easier for our customers what are we doing to ensure that our customers find 
as much value in that content uh, as much we are putting uh, you know uh, in creating content together right yeah. so um, I, that's something you know which is uh, which keeps bothering me uh, very often yeah i somehow um, you know i would i mean i would beg to differ from what vikesh feels i think we all keep talking about how um, yeah you know uh, people are reading less but i feel that um, and i uh, th that is kind of answering the question that harpreet asked right before that you know the the consumption and the medium of consumption has changed so i don't think i feel the youngsters today are much uh, better read in a lot of ways i mean they are much more informed they are much more clued into what's happening they are making their choices in terms of what they want to read uh but of course the consumption the medium has changed and i think that's where what i meant by um, you know uh, the big publishers who have deep pockets and the money to lead uh, by way of understanding how it's not just physical books that we need to talk about when we are talking about selling books we need to talk about how we take that content in or maybe i mean um, the, the book the idea outside of a physical um, platform you know and take it into on, on take it on different mediums so i i feel there you know that is one area where all the publishers need to come together and start um, having conversations open conversations about how to tap into the readership base it's not like the readership readership base is not growing but i think we are lacking in how we are tapping into and understanding even today if you ask a publisher who your reader is who your end consumer is they will not know they don't have <clears throat> in case at least not in trade publishing so i think there is some somewhere you know we are also uh, at fault in not really going out there uh, to understand our customers better you know who is reading what today you know we are still selling them probably any blightons while they may have graduated on to something more uh, you know which is more Uh, uh, okay. important to them what we were reading as a 14 year old today a 14 year old is far better read you know they read uh, a much uh, uh, what what would how how do i put it it's it's there there are bigger books that we couldn't have thought of reading at the age of 14 which a 14 year old today reads so probably we are not targeting our we are not target marketing uh, better and we are not target marketing better because we are not understanding our target audience better so i think that is some that is one place where i think the larger uh, publishers need to take that first step towards you know understanding who the end consumer is the demographic is what is working with a teenager what is working with a we are just still continuing to at least in trade publishing we are continuing to push uh, content you know we are not really gauging the uh, 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 um, the market to understand what they would like to read and that is why you know in the last few years you see such surprises that you know there are there are people like uh, uh, you know uh, there are new stars that uh, people have in their reading world you know they, you you would not have heard of them say up until 5 years ago whereas they were still writing for a long time right. but suddenly the readership uh, you know what they want to read has changed their their require i mean the choices have changed so i think that is one uh, challenge that we need to overcome yeah I, i just want to clarify one point uh, you know uh, when i when i talk about uh, uh, declining readership i am not talking about declining readership in general uh, i am i am looking at that problem as a specific publisher right yeah. so now uh -huh. what happens is say, say for example hypothetically you know uh, uh, in the previous era you would print a book with a minimum number of copies of say 5 10000 right uh, those print runs have started shrinking now okay. uh, the market overall may have been you know increasing so one of the reasons for shrinkage in a particular publishers print quantity could be that there are more publishers now there are self published authors now right so so in totality the market may be growing but as a publisher my concern is that why should my print runs continue to shrink right and what can i do to uh, drive readership for my books right so that's that's just one point that you know i wanted to uh, clarify so overall yes i tend i tend to i do make uh, vikesh things have changed you know just yeah. sorry to uh, interrupt but you know right. i think uh, even uh, even when you you're aware that you know a particular title will sell a particular number you know maybe 20000 50000 copies and still uh, publishers are um, uh, making that uh, you know uh, i mean they are taking the decision to 
uh, print in smaller numbers because I think that helps them cut the costs uh, as well. You know, yeah. so I think a lot of decision making has definitely uh, changed. I mean, we we've changed the way we used to decide on print runs earlier. But yes, I do agree. I mean, when you're talking about a publisher your size, of course, you know the numbers have shrunk in physical sales. Physical books, yes. Yeah. I think, you know, that's um, um, uh, it's it's actually true that you know um, the one of the reasons why publishers have also uh, uh, become more conservative in print runs is that the advancements in technology have ensured that books can be reprinted quickly. Right. So uh, there's no point in holding inventory for long durations, which used to be the case earlier. Uh, also. Uh, channels don't pay you on time. So, you know, that's mm -hmm. another problem that publishers grapple with, right? So how do you get your payments quickly? How do you get your payments faster, right? So, yeah, so uh, lots of challenges, you know. Uh, but but <laughs> despite all of that, it's an exciting world, an exciting place to be in. Sure. So thank you so much. Uh, that brings us to end of segment two. Um, we will connect for segment three, which will be a very exciting rapid fire round for both of you. Okay, cool. Okay. Sure, thanks. Thanks.